Nutrient deficiencies suck. They always leave clues. You can figure it out, man. They let you know they're coming along. You can get them fixed. Let's, we're gonna learn today. Scott did some deep digging on nutrient deficiencies and I found a great visual aid. So how's it going, Scotty Grambo? Good day. Good day to you, sir. What's up, Grambino? Wow, uh, do good. I'm I'm in surgery right now. We had to tape this a little earlier. So. Uh, hey, I wanted to bring this up. Yeah, this is something I saw over. I was I was uh, checking out this guy, this guy was growing on real buckets, and I don't know what he's feeding it, but man, it was such a an obvious uh, magnesium deficiency. It had the intervenal chlorosis. Hey, Grandpa, would you show this? Yeah, that is what intervenal chlorosis looks like right down there. Mm-hmm. So it's just. Chlorosis is what? It's not getting the, you know, it's less green. It's losing its green. It's yellow. chlorotic. It's yellowing. Yes. And then it's between the veins. Yes. So the grains, the veins stay green and everything else starts to fade. Yeah. So, but it was really, you know, for me, I look at that clue and I'm like, absolutely. That's magnesium deficiency. Give it some Epsom salts and it should clean that up. Uh, but it just reminded me how important it is to really be able to uh, recognize the nutrient, defic- nutrient deficiencies. And recognize how you got there. Even you know, some people, sure, I found how to fix it. How did you get there? Because if you don't change anything, it's probably going to happen again. Yeah, definitely. Dev, I thought we'd look at this chart, man. It's pretty awesome. Do we shout out? I, I thought just, you were going to pull up the standard uh, poster of like nutrient deficient leaves, but this is pretty cool looking. Yeah. What is this called, Scott? Molder's chart? Oh, no, that's that's Molder's chart. Oh. That's different. Oh, we're going back here? Yeah, yeah. This thing. What? Who made this? We should give a Future shout out. Har- Future Harvest. Yeah. Yes. Um. Anyway, it's, it's really cool, man. Let's scroll this thing. If you, why don't we take it from the top with nitrogen, man? All right. Hey, Grandpa can scroll sideways now. <laughs> I got I very got, excited. Yeah, right I got there, sideways brother. scrolling. Because this is one that I was playing with uh, adding more grow dots. I added 105 grams of grow dots next to a plant with 75. I wanted to see what would happen. And it burnt it is what happened. It's too much. And if you just take a look, that is a classic. It's a nitrogen burn right there. Mm. And look at the toxicity right there. You see how the leaf tips are burnt and then clawing and then curling mm. down. Yeah. Yes. The curling boat. All these images have a, you know, toxicity or deficiency. And we're looking at the left side, obviously. Um, Yeah, it looks gnarly. Yeah, but that's how you would tell a nitrogen uh, toxicity. And then the deficiency, you can see it's getting, uh, it's just losing its color. It's it's just yellow. Also, I always like to point out nitrogen is a mobile element. So you'll notice that it's uh, greener at the top and lower. So it's also not only is it yellowing, you'll notice it starts from the lowers and goes to the top. That's nice. a dead giveaway for nitrogen. Damn, I wish I could scroll sideways. <laughs> Come on, ah. baby. Man, I kind of <laughs> scroll over these. The P and the K, I very rare. Here you go. But I very rarely have a potassium or a uh, or a phosphorus deficiency because pretty much uh, – yeah, my nutrients pretty much cover that. Yeah, with bloom boosters and whatnot. That's always going to take care of that P and K. Yeah, but even just the regular base nutrients for the most part do. But that's really interesting. Do me a favor, scroll up if you would, that potassium deficiency right there. Take a look. It just starts stealing because it is mobile. It just starts robbing it from the outside edges. Mm. Yeah. I'm just not familiar with these because I don't get deficiencies. Uh, of course. Uh, you know what? You're Most the, of these macros, the I don't. But I, I tell you, this. I did this because I walked into my grow and I just knew I'd burn them with nitrogen. And it gave me this super clear clue. And I thought it'd be cool to, sh- to share it with folks. And right. then also playing with the calcium and magnesium, I've screwed things up. I have gotten calcium deficiencies. The yeah. Classic rust spots. They yep. start burrowing through. And that's different than magnesium. Magnesium is that intervenal chlorosis. Calcium is those rust necrosis spots. Ooh. I agree. Yeah, some of these can be good to know. Of course, some plants are more calcium hungry than others, and your base nutrients aren't covered. I didn't want to sound snooty by saying, oh, I never get deficiencies. I haven't had deficiencies in a long time. Um, uh, you know, my past two grows were grow dots. Shout out to your grow dots. They seem to cover all the bases. Yeah. I was on the fence a little bit about how I like to finish with uh, cutting out regular nutrients like right away because I go a little harder on my flushes. Um, but when you're using, you know, some quality nutrients that and microbes, I know, sure. Yes, God sells <clears throat> microbes. I get it. This isn't being a shill for real. I haven't had to adjust my pH or had a nutrient issue 
in any of the past grows grown in cocoa, cocoa or peat, a mix of the two with microbes and a quality based nutrient that's going to cover your basis. Now I see Scotty, if you're new to organic growing, or maybe you're making your own mixes, I might want to know these more, but and it's good to know these anyway. If you're a grower, you know you know what you're running up against. But man, it's it's is pretty easy once you get in. You know we love microbes; so they're working for you in the root zone. So I know where this show isn't about microbes, but I just had to say that. Oh, you know what? It, it, it certainly can be because the microbes you were talking about, what how they make nutrient available or how they make it more available. Yeah, well, it, it, I'm not worried about pHing and pH in the root zone, microbes yeah. in the network, making nutrient available, like you're saying. It's yeah, and I was just man, I, I was reading this a microbe for some microbe science for gardeners, I think it's called uh, Robert Paulvis, and it's really good, man. But it really got me down the rabbit hole, dude. You're gonna be triggered because I started Chat GPTing things and just going <laughs> down this rabbit hole. Dude, I did. Just trying to learn stuff for my Scotty Real 420 channel. I work, I know things in my head, but I try to get them out to explain them simply. And if I can sp- explain it simply, th- then I know it enough. And I was yeah. just you know, thinking about hydrogen and pH is the potential of hydrogen. Hydrogen uh, cations are acidic. And so that as these aerobic microbes take that air, the oxygen that they need for aerobic activity, H2O, they're releasing hydrogen. So that hydrogen, that's how they can control and regulate their own pH. It's it's pretty cool, man. I dig. I dig. Now, now educate me a little. Why do I want to know the difference between mobile and immobile nutrients? I believe it has to do where where deficiencies can start or where you start to see them or do they stay there? Yeah, I'll give you an example, because if it's an immobile deficiency and I'm in veg, I'll probably cut that leaf off. I just had some calcium deficient leaves. They really were. It was just locked out. We'll talk about that with the molders chart. But there you go. They look so bad, like leaves on the bottom, almost all of those leaves. I'm like, man, I might have to take pictures of this. So as in veg, so I just removed those. Now I had magnesium deficient uh, uh, leaves. And for that, I added, actually, I'm experimenting. One of the experiments is with dolomitic lime. So about 10 days ago, I added lime to there, which has a lot of calcium and a lot of magnesium. And that has corrected itself. That intervenal chlorosis has uh, repaired it itself because it's, it has uh, it was able to mobilize that nutrient and bring it up to where it needed it. Interesting. Yeah, I got you got to be careful of that though, right? Because if you're you don't want to have any and you're probably going there eventually antagonism or if you're adding more of one thing not the other thing or you know just throwing off the balance of nutrients. Grambo knows, man. Now it's Grambo's time. ready. I was man. I was getting ahead because I'd never heard of Mulder's chart no. before. Yeah. This thing's cool. You can Google this and or chat GPT. No, I'm just kidding. Uh you can Google this, but it's it take a look. All those are the nutrients on the outside. What do you got? Magnesium, calcium. Uh the hell is Q C U. Right scroll. <laughs> magnesium, <laughs> uh, molybdenum, that's a cool one. Zinc, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, boron, iron. Okay, anyway, okay. take a look Let's at how the red go- arrows. Okay, take a look. The one will antagonize the other. And so this is nutrient antagonism. And so it's when you have the way the arrows are going, all the red arrows antagonize and all the green arrows synergize. So they help each other. So take a look at calcium and potassium right there. This up top, the CA going to the K. It's saying if you have too much calcium, it'll lock out the potassium. Mm. You know, if you have too much magnesium, it'll lock, I'm sorry, too much calcium will lock out the magnesium. You see the calcium and magnesium Mm -hmm. going right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's a trip, right, man? So you can just kind of, you know, look at this and it tells you, man, you have to have everything in balance. If you have too much calcium, you lock up your zinc. This is what made me skeptical of one part nutrients in a bottle liquid wise, because it's I think it's kind of tricky to be able to bottle everything with even having this antagonizing taking place. Even though I have used a few shout out to uh, Medi One from uh, Green Planet has been pretty decent, although I haven't finished with it. But go ahead. 
you can do it, man. But this is why it's really important. It's why it took me a couple of years to formulate the grow dots, because getting the proportions right is huge. I like it. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm never one that mixes them myself. I've always relied on a manufacturer to provide right. me with you know, essential planted nutrients, if you will. Yeah. Um, but if you know what you're doing, you can definitely save some money with some powders. You know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm, it took me a very smart. Thank God the guy that's my formulator is very smart and understands the, the chemistry. That was a great disclosure. Scotty is not the formulator of Grow Dots. He's the. I guess. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I am. I'm the guy that goes. We need more cow mag in there, and he goes. That's, yeah. that's not a thing, man. <laughs> I will. I will tell you when I ask. The reason I'm experimenting with dolomitic lime is because I was talking to my formulator, and he was telling me how, on a large scale, del dolomitic lime is pretty much how they control their calcium and magnesium. It's loaded with it. So as opposed yeah. to pouring a bunch of calcium and magnesium products out, you know, when they're you know growing commercially, uh, they're amending the soil with dolomitic lime. Interesting. Grambo, uh, your sc side scroll is making me jealous because I had to use a different mic today. And it's using the USB port of my my little weak ass mouse that I rely on. Mm. And now I'm using the finger mouse on the laptop and it drives me. I wish ah. say, I, we should say my, my mouse died and. And Lee's yeah. like, I will buy it for at you least it's a if you use it. And so today I was like, dude, I'm going to use it. Look at all this side scrolling. Uh, <laughs> thank you, dude. And yeah. thank you, DGC, thank you, DGC supporters. DGC. Yes. Seriously, here's your money. My my expensive <laughs> scroll mouse. Thank you, guys. You bought a $100 mouse of the DGC's money? Well, but it's going to last forever. Look all at this. Right. High C right. even told me it was a smart move. He's like, that's a good mouse. Uh, have thanks. you seen the side scroll yet? Side scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you think are some big ones, man? The phosphorus and potassium, they're, pr they're pretty uh, easily identif identifiable. Um, yeah, the calcium and the magnesium were the ones that I really wanted to talk about. And they are, if you that Mulder's chart says it, man, they will antagonize each other, man. So if you put too much calcium in there, it will antagonize the magnesium. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you put too much salt in your game, the haters come out. Shout out to all you millennials. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Engine growers, me and Gangsta Pop out here, we're going to tell you what's up with IPM and your grow. Solving problems with bugs, powdery mildew, fungus gnats, white flies, botrytis, aphid strips. That's right. Lost post plant therapy as your vac, guys. You don't need to be using poisons and pesticides in your grow. Go to lost coast, lostcoastplanttherapy.com. And coupon code DUDE will hook you up with 20% off. And don't forget, you can go over there and just get their two-ounce free sample to get you going. That's Lost Coast at Therapy.com. It's a mouthful, Lost Coast. Coupon code DUDE will hook you up. DGC approved. Great IPM product. You know what's one we never talk about is sulfur. Because almost everything, it's, you know, it's half of most things, right? Potassium sulfate. And I don't know, there's a lot of, there is a lot of sulfur that comes in your fertilizer already. I don't really see a sulfur toxicity or I'm sorry, sulfur uh, deficiencies too much. Do you, anybody hear about that? No, typically nah. not. No, nah. So that one's pretty safe with, but look at all, all these. So mobile, partially mobile, interesting. The way they just suck up the, uh, it's like they're sucking the life out from the tip in, huh? Hmm. Yeah, what a trip. It was, it, it's just, a tip would be, again, I'm being repetitive, but use some just quality nutrients. Go with the recipe. I'll shout out, like, you used Canna A and B in their cocoa. Like, just two bottles. Mm -hmm. You got an A and a B at different ratios. Again, though, I don't want to say, okay, What's I used that? to, use, I used to e use equal parts A and B. I didn't ask questions. I didn't understand. My weed came out great. No. <laughs> that was a rest. No, I didn't. Well, I meant different ratios of MPK in each bottle, of course, for when you're sure. putting them in or Sure. Um, but if you are following a feed chart, which kind of sound, can sound lame, uh, do use a pH pen if you're not using microbes. If you're in a NERC media and you don't have any good guys working for you, you will need to adjust your pH or you're going to see a lot of these deficiencies coming at you when you're off. Um, it could be, though, sometimes when you pour your tap water out, my tap water is, let's say, neutral, seven, and then after I add some canned nutrients to it, it brings it down. Typically, it brings it down somewhere within the acceptable range for my plant. 
Um, but yeah, I can't emphasize that enough, man. Just use some good microbes up in there, some quality nutrients. Right. And you will have success. I haven't seen a, a deficiency in years and years and years and years. And it's not because I'm a badass grower. I'm just using good products and following directions. I don't think they'll be mad to say that can of A and B, Coke, can of cocoa, which is what I use, and recharge is one hell of a combination, man. Really is. I I was using can of A and B, and uh, that was when I discovered microbes, man. Ten gallon smart pots, and I just threw out my uh, my pH pen. I say I didn't throw it out. I just let it go to crap on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, it's probably still there. I'll do a, a one shout out for the growers like me that instead of grow dots, we, we want some bloom dots. And now you said a product, you know, for somebody isn't for everybody, but it's like, man, I go to bloom quick. Sometimes I can go to bloom. Like I can get my plants through the early veg with a little bit of one product, like Medi One or something. But then within, you know, 10 days, sometimes I can go right into bloom if I want to. So bloom you dots. Know, got stay, you. Well, stay tuned because I am doing uh, basically a bunch of soil recipes and different amounts of silica, uh, dolomitic lime dots. And so I'm doing it uh, with a two week veg because I'm really int- I just really want to see how these plants perform. I don't need them being huge. And I've got 24 of them in basically what a six by eight area. So they're just jammed right neck and neck. So I'm going to do a grow dots run with a two week veg and we'll be honest. We'll see what happens. Interesting. How about I that, do want to see wow. my grower concern is the flush. I'm going to feel like I'm going to still have too much nutrition to get the flush. I'm not saying the smoke. You know, we'll be bad at all. That's I, a whole other debate we haven't talked about in a while. How yeah, is man. Anyway, but. It, well, it, plants have metabolism, same way humans do. And when they senesce, they stop pulling up nutrients. They're about to die. They know they're going to die. They're not, they're not, they just don't have it in them. I used grow dots a few times and I added some of Jared's winter frost around that time. Like it's just as the emergency break, they faded out. Both grows, I mixed them a little bit differently in both times. Yeah. yeah. They totally faded. I uh, mean, if you're dumping immobile nutrient on there to where it's just nitrogen is just being dumped on there and it's making contact with the roots, I mean, I guess you could still get nitrogen on there. But, man, it is, uh, I don't know, it's just the way it's done, the way it's done for me. I have had a nice fade. I've had purple. No, I'm not seeing it, man. It's the night. Well, excuse me, Scotty and Grambo. Nice <laughs> oh. It's a grow show, yeah, man. Win. It's a grow show. I'll let you know, though. It should be fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were talking about that earlier. It's cool to grow for fun. You know, I'm like, all right, man, I got a... Uh, you know, I, I got enough weed to last me for a little bit. And so now I can go and pay. Hey, I'm going to take the whole grow and maybe it all messes up. Maybe I have to throw it out. I'm going to try different cocos. I've got some different brands of cocoa. See what happens. I went in here for you because it's a good time. If you guys do want to try it out, you're curious. Realgrowers.com is where you can get your grow dots. I think coupon code dude might be hanging out over there. Just try it. You can try oh, yeah. coupon code dude on any website you're on when you're checking out. Uh, as well as uh, get your recharge over there as well. Realgrowers.com, recharge and grow dots and uh, up your grow game. Dude, that was so cheap. You know what? Actually, that, that uh, nutrient deficiency guide there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, bought, I made a poster of it. Oh, really? Yeah, 24 inch by 24 inch poster. And I'm going to put it on my wall inside the grow. And when I went to, you know, I'm shopping for posters. It's Saturday morning. And I'm uh, looking, I'm like, all right, it was like $35 for a damn poster shipped to you. And so I'm like, let me find some coupon codes. So, dude, I asked Chat GPT for coupon codes. And guess what? (laughs) Every one of them was bunk. All right. They were wrong. I love telling dude that Chat GPT was wrong. It does some things well and some things. Not well. I just want to see. Oh, I think you're getting ready for. We should get ready for some dirty, dirty grow talk, man. Dirty, dirty. Deuces. DGC producers. We're going to start. We called it. We're coining it dirty grow talk. Coming every Wednesday for your producers on realdgc.com. Let's shout some of these real producers out. Yes. Give up to RH. Am I saying just RH Martha? Martha? Or am I messing? I'm trying to think of it something else. You guys always mess it with me. What do you Marthia. mean? Martha. Yeah, I know. It could be, man. It could be just a typo, or it could be R H Martha. DK Sharpie 17. That's easy. DK Sharpie 17. What's up? Thank you, producers. Come on. I got to have this one. Simon LeBong, if you're my age, 
you know who Simon LeBong is, all right? <laughs> Anybody? Grambo, you don't know this one. I don't know that Lead one. singer of Duran Duran and according to all my seventh grade female friends, uh-huh. absolutely adorable. Oh, adorbs? Oh, he was like the, you know, it was almost like uh, Wham, remember George Michael? Uh-huh. It was like that time. Sorry, Grambo, you're young. You don't remember <laughs> that stuff. Who else you got? Oh, sorry, man. It threw me off of Simon LeBong. <laughs> growing Corners 42. Huh. Growing Corners. <laughs> Some Growing Corners. That's my Jay Growing Bolda. Corner right there. Jay Bolda 2009 and Lunchbox High. What's up, Lunchbox High? I hope it's a metal one. Uh, remember Lunch good old metal Lunchbox. I read that as Lun- yeah, wait, Lunchboxity. <laughs> Lunchboxity. Really? I wrote it as Lunchbox. Thank you. Well. <laughs> and I'm going to go with uh, Is Farms. What's up, Is Farms? Click on that, Grambo, actually. Uh, is Farms won a pack of Dr. Blaze. I wanted to show the picture. That's a link to his grow. Um, and check out, like, just how he has stuff decorated in there. The little... Yeah. You got the, there we go. You. Wow. Thank you for your service. Dude, he went off. He's got, like, a little gnome, like a mushroom house. Can you zoom in down on the stuff down low at all? Or no, yeah. it takes it out and you can't... No, no, oh, there it. we go. I got that new mouse, dude. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Dude, hey, we got bridges. There's little bridges between the containers from wow. the little mushroom huts. Like, you went all out. I love it. <laughs> that is all out. Wow. 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 That is an ecosystem right there. Nice. Yes. So, Pack of Dr. Blaze, guys, you producers, we're giving up seed packs every Saturday morning. One Eyed Cat's putting them up in the VIP exclusive giveaways. And you can comment over there to win. So be sure you're checking out that exclusive giveaways because we were putting things in there, such as seeds and some grow gear. And any of y'all that's not going to be able to join us on this dirty grow talk, love it. <laughs> Reminds me of one of my favorite shows, Mike Rowe. Can we get Mike Rowe in on this? Uh, dirty grow talk. Uh, what do you think? Seen over in the exclusive content, guys. If you want to check this out, it's for your producers in the exclusive content group. Membership is free if anybody wants to come over and join, but you got to pay to become a producer and help support this show. I'm sorry, man. Can we go back to Dr. Blaze? Is that yeah. Dr. Uh, Blaze or Grambo? Mm-hmm. Is that Dr. Ballsy? Mm. <laughs> B-A-L-Z-E. And I do believe he is a doctor. Dr. Ballsy. Uh, yes. So I think okay, I misspelled man, that. I'm pretty sure Dr. Blaze has got typed o, typoed out. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> All right. I think we'll hop cool. into this. RealDGC.com forward slash upgrade, guys. You get 30% off real growers. We get seed giveaways. And you support the show. It's 10 bucks. Sticker pack comes right out to you. So please, if you enjoyed the show, up your grow game. RealDGC.com forward slash yeah. upgrade. Absolutely. It's huge. Uh, Times like today, we really are conflicted over whether we, uh, you know, what we want to show, what we want to do. So it's really cool to be able to be able to have the freedom to do what we want because y'all got our back. So we appreciate that. Let's get into this dirty grow talk, guys. We'll be back in a moment. Could have been a living soil recipe that wasn't, you know, hot enough or provided enough nutrition. Absolutely. What, what are they? Uh, what's in there? As far I don't know what in their living soil mix because the pickle brick did not mention. But the build of bloom deck definitely not meant to be like a standalone. I believe that's more of a Go to fall of prohibition reports. I wonder how long this will be a segment. How long will we still be reporting on prohibition falling? Uh, for a while it's getting fun you know state by state they're falling down they just did they actually reschedule it yet god i mean the election's coming up i've been doing so good about just not paying any attention to anything <laughs> you, you know have, you have to yeah you have to not <laughs> it's, only, yeah. it's the only way to be sane but ohio went legal I, I I guess it was this year because it says Ohio cannabis market soars to seventy six million dollars in less than two months. Yeah, but Michigan remains the leader. <laughs> Mighty Michigan, man. So it's pretty from August sixth. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty to the end of September, man. That's pretty crazy. It's gonna last. You know, it's, I think markets are usually the strongest when legalization first comes out. Yeah, um, but doesn't just as long, but it's pretty impressive. Michigan uh, did two hundred and ninety-five yeah. million. So in August, wait, no way. 
Michigan said in August alone, total cannabis sales hit $295 million. In August alone, is that a typo? No, there's a lot of people in Michigan. And then I think I'm positive that Michigan has a lot of good, inexpensive weed that is fairly centrally located, I guess, or maybe not for the South, but um, it's a highway or a super highway for really good weed. A lot of good weed coming out of Michigan. That's all I'll say. All right. Interesting. Shout out. Yes, Thank sir. A lot of recharge getting pumped in there, man. Oh, well, like they said, somebody here in the article says, frankly, it's still worth it for me to drive to Michigan to buy ah. cannabis. One Ohioan, one Ohioan, Ohioan, Ohioan. Is that right? Sure. Yeah. Ohioan. Excuse me. Ohioan <laughs> from Cleveland suburbs and marijuana prices here in Ohio are so much higher than Michigan. So it's cheap. And even after I pay for gas to drive both ways. Hmm. Right. Interesting. Past yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, what else we got? Feds. The feds are hiring a contractor to roll hundreds of thousands of marijuana cigarettes for research. Come on. I don't care if it's fake news or not. That's awesome. It's Ben Alden. He's got our back. Ben Alden. How you been? Or is it Adlin? I don't know. Um, yeah. We should get I've been, I've been Adlin, man. Let's I've been get, Adlin. If anyone knows Ben, get us in contact oh. with him. He he. We do a lot of his stories. For Marijuana Moment, shout out to him. Hey, I met a really nice kid at a bluegrass festival, and his name was Ben Wright. I've been right, but hey, I've, ben, I've been wrong. And he says, like, you people bust his balls over it, man. <laughs> ben Wright. I've been right, but I've been wrong. Yes. So they're preferring these joints be hand-rolled, small batch, with a specified range of Delta 9, THC, or CBD, or both, required by NIDA. All right. Nice. Why not just get prisoners to do this? Delta Let nine. them smoke a little bit. You know, I'll bet you there's people in jail that can roll really good joints. <laughs> Most of them. God, actually, that would <laughs> suck, right? If it, you'd, have, you'd have to let them smoke it. Because uh, can you imagine? That would be, give the worst, you know, the, the, the worst offenders where they got to roll them, but they can't smoke them. <laughs> that's punishment right there. I don't know. And the CBD, it says THC and CBD levels in the sample orders are notably below what are most commercially available products in state legal markets. Low THC levels are going to be ranging from 1% to 2.5% and high levels from 35 to 5%. Whoa. <laughs> Yikes. No, uh, no bueno. That's awesome. You read this. <laughs> Did you hear the feds are hiring a contractor to roll hundreds of thousands of marijuana cigarettes, man. M- marijuana cigarettes? Marijuana cigarettes. Oh, goddamn. Nah, Looks like you're all. zooming on uh zooming on text now better as well, Grandma. This mouse is amazing. I'm telling you, buddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Prohibition's falling, brother. I like it. I like it. Let's take it to uh some comments here, man. Comments, guys, leave us comments. I think these were actually for comments I pulled from uh, DGC Grow Talk channel. If you guys don't know, go check out DGC Grow Talk. It's a short form content on YouTube. Consumable bite sized pieces. Uh, but yeah. this is from. <laughs> Hang on one second. First off, Grambo, mm-hmm. you're awesome. Is that Colin from uh, Mammoth right there? Do him? <laughs> no, the, the other one. <laughs> That's Eminem. I'm being careful not to gender anybody there, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we got a, a new episode just came out. HBS vs. LED. The Amendment 3 episode will be out on Friday. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this is actually really us. This is us. There's a couple of imitators out there, but this is really us, man. We've been doing purpose, purpose-built purpose content win. over there. You know you didn't win anything if there's somebody's telling you you need to pay for shit. We, no, we don't give away anything in the comments no. ever. Ever, ever, ever. No. It's not a scam. All right. This comment's about some autos. Steve, what's up? Autos make, I like this, it's very simple and good. Autos, auto flowers make perpetual grows and a single 2 by 4 tent possible. I like a four to five week veg indoor. Fo- oh. I like four to five week veg on endo photo, peri- photo periods and typically run in a five by five. Now, I agree with this because one, obviously, we don't have to worry about light cycle at all. If you want to have two all perpetual grow, you're going to have to have at least two, if not three different areas. Typically, it could be a nursery seedlings, a veg tent. Veg tent can do both of those. And then your bloom tent with a different life cycle. So I do like the autos from perpetual. Yeah, what did they say? Four or five week veg on indoors and then you just put four of them in a five by five? 
Man, that does sound yep. like a lot. That's going to fill the hell out of that, right? If you've got a four weed veg, that sounds yeah, it sounds about right, actually. I got another comment. I, this makes me want to try that. Actually, I got a two by four in my kitchen right now with our ghost peppers. <laughs> are about over the ghost peppers. Once you have enough of those, they're good for a while. I have these it. autos that I've been meaning to pop forever. It would take no big sure. deal to throw these in the corner, you know, it's whatever. Mm. Yeah. Although I'm you would be it. growing those in your in with your photos or no? Yes. Yes, I would. But I would put them in my veg. Okay. Because you have an 18. I thought your veg was just a closet, though. More or less. Yeah. All right, I'm just getting to the point. It is uh, 18 hours is preferred. I'm no professional auto grower. You can grow them 12, 12 just fine. You just won't grow as much. We won't have as much blood on there. I'd like to see. That sounds cool. I, I have the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to do up. that. I'm, yeah, yeah. All right, another comment from Mike Honcho. Mike Honcho, here is my best advice for growers. Stick to one style of growing. If you want organic, stick with soil organics or deep, deep water culture, or cocoa, whatever you choose, and get good at it. Buy quality genetics, in my experience, Ethos, Humble Seed Co., In-House Genetics, Greenhouse Seed Co., all are solid companies. I'll hit those one more time because I agree. That's Ethos, Humble Seed Co., In-House Genetics, Greenhouse Co., um, and then watering, and this is a big one, was one of the biggest newbie mistakes. Learn to water properly and when to water. Transpiration is the game. Mic drop. I thought that was just pretty good. If you, Hey, let me tell me in a paragraph about growing. Yeah. That was really great information, man. You're right. Get good at something. Don't just, uh, you know, oh, I tried deep water culture one time and I didn't do good. So then I tried living soil and I didn't do good. There's a learning curve with these. Mm, that so. is good. Transpiration is the game. I would say that is 100% the case. Not how much you're putting in. It's how much they're drinking and off-gassing, right? Yeah. Oh, oh man. I didn't even think I would have said watering is the game, but he played 3D chess with me, man. <laughs> Shout out, well, Mike. We didn't mention that earlier. Also, I've seen some plants that are overwatered that people st- think they're, they're chasing nutrient deficiencies because it can do some weird thing to the leaves. And then you're like, no, it's actually you're, you're overwatering it. So be careful. And then also he caused nutrient deficiencies because the plant can't drink. You've drowned yeah. the root so badly that it can't drink. So it can't get any nutrients. I like this next one. CO2 tip here. Uh, yeah. From. Brian M hmm. says, if you heat your house with gas, with a gas furnace, granted it needs to be winter time or fall, you don't need to supplement CO2 in the winter. Your ambient levels stay at a decent level and peak high every time the furnace runs. I've measured the furnace. Um, obviously, if you grow in the basement, it's a bit more depending. Even if I saw a furnace pilot light elevate. But it says also, if you have good air exchange and aren't over 85 degrees, you probably won't need to supplement CO2 either. What do you think about that, Scatty? You know, if if this just a disclaimer or since we're a grow show, man, let's just talk about that because the difference between carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is an extra oxygen molecule. So at it's um You'll, you can stay alive with carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon monoxide will put you to sleep. So it's, it, for you, you know, you'll die from it. So it's important that you don't, uh, in what, okay, here's what I want to say. Uh, when you have a hot water heater or an air conditioning furnace, something like that, uh, if they're working, perfectly properly they'll have this complete combustion and you'll get carbon dioxide out of it by the way that's not even supposed to be mixed in with your you know with your with your uh, ambient air that's actually supposed to go up a flue and out and it's separated from your air conditioner it's not like that gas air uh mixes into your uh, you know into your uh fresh air, you know the system that's giving air out the vents it just heats up that air it's an air exchange. Let's give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, AC Infinity. If you're an indoor grower and you're looking for the highest quality grow gear out there, you got to check out acinfinity.com. Their tents, fans, grow controllers give you total control over your grow environment so you can dial things in exactly how you want them and grow stress free. Go check out all the grow gear at acinfinity.com and use coupon code DUDEGROWS for a great deal. That's acinfinity.com. Coupon code dude grows. All right, let's get back to learning some growth. It's an air exchange. 
I, but, I like kind of do grow hack where you leave the side of the furnace open and either use a fan or an inline fan to pull CO2 off of it to your grow space. Something like that sounds good, right? I mean, yeah, I, you can die from it, man. I had something that's, you know, it's uh, it, back in my old house. I had an older furnace and it had a cracked manifold to it. And uh, it, I mean, it's a laugh, but it, when my kid was uh, in her bedroom and she was just super groggy and weird, I was like, holy shit, man, I was super groggy. I'm like, I think we're getting poisoned here. And sure enough, we went outside to we almost had the, the family dead in the in the house from the malfunctioned heater. Like for real. That's because you moved from Florida. You just you know, out of sight. What is that? The heater? What? Yes. <laughs> Banner, you're gonna, er, bat, banner, I'm sorry, Grant, but you're not going to make a joke about me and my whole family dying. Yeah, I, I almost, it's funny because I almost died. My whole family almost died in a, a CO1, not CO2 explosion CO, yeah. from, uh, yeah, I was a houseboat and all of the windows were done and we got off the houseboat and it exploded like a minute later. Like my whole family almost died. It's gasoline. No, it was a, you know, a propane you fridge. Either, yeah, propane. Not a, something bad way propane. to go. Houseboat explosion or, you know, slowly maybe with this, this, you just go to sleep with the other one. Is that how yeah. it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was peaceful, man. I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll get up tomorrow and leave the house tomorrow. See, I wasn't a CO, uh, I guess. I, you know, man, I, said, I don't want to come on all heavy, but it's really important that you, that shit, that uh, uh, exhaust should be exhausted out. It shouldn't be hanging out in your basement. Yeah. Super easy. Just have a CO uh, carbon monoxide detector. You should have one of those in your house as well, regardless. And yes, service your furnace once a year, every winter. It is good to do. Then yeah. you're safe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the last the CO2. to talk about safety, man. But uh, yeah, you should do that. Too. The end all for me is getting simply a CO2 monitor or controller. No knowledge is power 100% in CO2. Know where your levels are at. They're not that expensive to get something to monitor your CO2 in your grow tent. Yeah. It is. And what do you think CO2 for a monitor controller is probably 150 bucks somewhere around there? Dude, uh, on, AC, Infinity, AC Infinity has a really inexpensive one. Dude, it's like 129 And if you go acinfinity.com, I'll do a quick shout out. And coupon code dude grows over there will hook you up. But it's and it's quality shit, man. I was I thought it was 162 And I looked the other day. I was recommending it to somebody. It was like $129. i am like, okay, game changer. Yeah, and you put a $50 regulator on there and, you know, whatever it costs you for the tank to rent the tank. And you have a huge performance upgrade. And you don't have to worry about... I know I, I see what they're doing. I don't want to. I don't want to poo-poo on on the heater because if you're growing in your basement and you have some, you know, some extra CO two in there, sure. But it would concern me. I want that thing venting properly. For sure. All right, bring it to the news. What you? I know you had one more comment here. Go go ahead and take it. I think you threw this on. Oh, this is grateful deadhead. They're a great gratefully deadhead. Yes. Uh, and it just talks that we were talking about grafting things, root grafting and bud grafting and all that. Uh, you can graft a tomato to a potato using the potato as the root. It's pretty cool. Okay. That's and pretty. That's, tomato? I don't know. And you know what? I, I should ask ChatGPT that, man. Trambo. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? That's pretty neat, though, man. You think, all right, should I ask? There's no way that Grateful ate Deadhead. Grateful Deadhead is going gonna, is gonna to deceive us, right? No. Possibly, possibly. You start asking the new here and update me. Um, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Yes, you can graft a tomato to a potato to create a pomato. Also known as a ketchup in fries plant. What? Come on. Oh, what's. Uh, nah, uh, is this real? There is no real anymore, dude. There isn't. Grambo, it's real, man. I feel like I gotta. I got it, man. All right. All right, here you go. There you go, man. Right in the comments, if you would. I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. Sorry. Yes. Blue. Let's see what happens, man. It is real, huh? <laughs> is it growing potatoes in the roots and it's also a tomato plant? Huh. Mm. 
<laughs> More research to be had. Those look good, though. That is. Um, oh. Sorry. It's okay. Hang on. Let's see what happens here, man. I don't trust that guy already, man. <laughs> AI. Is they're sweeter than any tomato you can buy in the supermarkets. Tomato. The flavor is sugary. Yet. Right. I trust somebody that says tomato, though, mm-hmm. right? Look at his hair. I trust him. <laughs> that is great hair. Great. Has he got an email address? I think he wants to sell that here? Potato guy. Dot yeah, they, they guys just both way lose dirt that was obviously just thrown there. This is all BS. Let's go to the news. <sighs> Are you sure? Y- yes. That's what happens when you start to open up those chat crap rabbit holes. I just made that up. Chat crap. What do you um, mean? It's from the My News Network, man. <laughs> <laughs> News here with chronic pain. Patients <clears throat> favor cannibal- cannabis legalization. Duh. Uh, study found 71, 71% of adults with chronic pain support are in favor of legalization. It totally makes sense. It's a huge help for without potential shitty side effects. What's the next line say, though? Uh, but what, the both groups? No, a study found that 71% of adults with chronic pain support federal legalization of medical wow. cannabis compared to 59% of physicians who get their money from, you know, fancy, you know, whatever. Don't they get to go on vacations and stuff and special conferences because they can recommend different brand name products and be trained on them? Yeah, reps. They'll get sponsored by reps. Yeah, they get they they do. They go on vacations. They go to these, you know, seminars or whatever. And how much of that's going to slow down or how many of their buddies are, you know, lobbyists and, you know, drug reps are telling them not to vote for this? There won't be some uh, commercials on TV soon for, like, green crack. Go ask your doctor. (laughs) I mean, do you remember we did talk about that? And they were like, hey, look, if you want to be taken seriously, you got to stop. You want to be treated as medicine, you got to stop naming stuff like green crack. (laughs) And they do have a point. They do. I I agree. But, uh, Scotty, those 59% of physicians, which aren't as much, maybe, I mean, they're still, I believe, going to be able to have different type of prescribed cannabis products and different cannabinoids and all that, uh, that they will also make money on, I would think. But we're not there yet. Yeah, I would hope not. You know, I mean, I I guess, but because then what is it's going to go schedule three and then you've got to go to your doctor and ask him for a prescription for those cannabis products. And then Pfizer designs those cannabis products for, you know, whatever it is. I don't I don't know. But hey, what's up with that, man? That is if she wants to sell her hair, I would take it in a second, man. (laughs) Oh, I found this one. This is meat, marijuana, Pepsi. All right. Meat, marijuana, Pepsi. <laughs> Who doesn't drink soda or smoke marijuana? Marijuana. Oh, that's her Sorry. name. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Marijuana, Pepsi, you have great hair. What the hell? Why is there two of her? What's happening? I don't know. So, so nice. Marijuana, Pepsi, twice, man. I'll give you background. Her mother, Maggie Johnson, named her Marijuana Pepsi, believing the distinctive moniker would bring global recognition. But growing up, Marijuana faced I can't, Marijuana Marijuana faced constant curiosity and whispers about her unique name. With many wrongly assuming her mother had a troubled past. What do you think? Is it cool? I think that you can name your kid anything, right? Of my closest friend in comedy, his legal name is uh, uh, PJ Johnson, but that stands for Papa Junior Joseph Papa Johnson. Yeah, he did tell me that. Wow. You can name your kid whatever you want, man. It's effed up. Marijuana Pepsi. Marijuana Pepsi. And look up. So 52 years old. So that means she was in 1971. Yikes. I think Pepsi was decent in 71, though, you know? It's still pretty good. Ew. I'm a Coca-Cola guy, man. Hey, she's okay. never smoked weed. Do you believe it? That's lame. <laughs> I, I never <laughs> believe it when people say that. I don't know if I believe any part of this. It's from Ghana Web. <laughs> Ghana <laughs> Web. Yeah. Dot com, at least. <laughs> Who had the best I never smoked weed excuse? You're never going to forget I didn't inhale. That was so awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Is this website from Ghana? It's Ghana, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, look how old school it is, man. <laughs> They're still on WordPress 2.0 in Ghana, yo. Shout out to you, Marijuana Pepsi. What else you got, Scotty? You got some memes for us? Some nice, uh, I don't know. Hey, yo, the, is it? Hang on, I got I got one thing for you, man. Do you missed the, we missed you last week, brother. We did, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Missed the show. Yeah. Um, 
we were talking GMO stuff, and it is a slippery slope with genetically modified things. This actually, this isn't genetically modified. This just has a crazy bacteria in it hmm. that might be genetically modified. But it is self-healing concrete that fixes its own cracks. <laughs> Interesting. Is that not cool? Or I mean, are you, are you sure? Um, ChatGPT. This is from BGR.com. You don't get a three letter domain <laughs> without being like that's an expensive domain. Burger, self healing concrete, a uh, healing process from the bacteria that is mixed into it. This bacteria then produces new limestone when the concrete heals, allowing it to completely close up the cracks without, without needing to have any concrete reapplied. And uh, they call themselves basilic. <laughs> No, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> that is really cool, man. Neat, no, yeah, that is. I live on a very cracked street, and the guy that was fixing it explained it to me. He's like, "Yeah, we put the tar down to get the, so rainwater doesn't get in there. The faster you can heal those plugs, the more you save the street." And so I immediately go, "Man, this would solve all of that if it works." And it seems I'm like saying it if it's GMO. So if something like that was genetically modified organisms. Yes, self boiling concrete is made using GMO organisms. Bacillus fila. Burn it, burn it down. Bacilla fila is what it is, man. Bacilla. Wow. Well, waiting for the plastic bottles that I can throw in my yard and then they're gone within like a day. Like they biodegrade with some implemented microbes in, in plastic, but they don't come active until it's empty of water or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't think we're that far away from it. If they would just give real funding to that, you would see that. And not, I'm sure there's a lot of people studying it, but uh, man, that can happen with the whole enzyme designer enzymes and all that and designer bacteria that can happen. It will happen. Use as much plastic as you want, man. You'll be fine. Somebody will invent our way out of this, all right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yes. Come on, you want to play? Is it real? I don't know. Sure. I, this I this don't game's know. not fun anymore. I don't know what's real. Nothing's man. real. Come on, this is real, right? This is real. <laughs> <laughs> this hairstyle is creative, uh, right? I love it. There's a couple. Is there a couple of them? Uh, let's check. No, that guy's <laughs> awesome. I feel like that's you maybe, on Christmas. <laughs> maybe. Hey, it's an exact replica. Do we dare roll the roulette again? I give it a whirl, man. I don't know what that means, man. That's a woman, no. a woman saying how good men have it. That's goth Shakira. <laughs> ah, there you go, man. That's my... Golly, man. That's what Machete looked like back in the day. Is That's what he was at the titty twister. No right? way. Is that really him? I think so, man. Wow. Is is that from Dust Till Dawn? No. Machete? It's got to be earlier. Yeah, he's got the bottle of Chevis. Oh. Seems to be quite energized. Oh, good God. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. Is Why is he wearing? Hang on, go back. Oh. He was wearing bunny rabbit slippers. Cause Machete he, was. Cause man. He's a pimp. That was weird, man. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Like, he is wearing bunny wraps. Well, because I'm wrong. That's like cholo chic. Grambo, scroll with your mouse. Yes. Oh, <laughs> getting old is rough, bro. Getting old is rough. <laughs> oh, hey, Grambo, this is we talk about AI, uh, and it's getting so real that you just can't tell what's real. Okay. This but is... this is when AI finds diving. So they're trying to get Whoa. AI to dive and it's screwing up. It's not doing good. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> weird, though. Right? I would argue that it's doing great. <laughs> like it's trying, but it's like this is AI <laughs> fails. <laughs> this is so cool. It's weird, right? I love this. It's learning, all oh, right? Oh, man, it's so trippy. <laughs> it's learning. It, like, doesn't really know the difference between humans and dolphins, so it's just kind of, like, dolphining us. It's weird, <laughs> man. And you're feeding the algorithm right here. Oh, my God. This is the funnest video <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Bollywood. It is weird. Oh, right? I'm loving this. This is oh, my new. Man. I'm going to wake up and watch this every morning and tell I'm myself. Telling, they were talking. My my wife's friends were talking about. I can't believe this happened. <laughs> the faces. 
in the news and how can I can't believe this and that. And I was like, yeah, you can't believe anything. That's... You can't believe what you see anymore. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> this is so, oh, this is so <laughs> trippy. I hate it. Else? Oh, <laughs> man, just. <laughs> Hey, click this next one. All right. It was stay safe, kids, is what this is called. All right. Is this real? I mean, after what we just saw. So. It looks legit. Yeah, no, I don't know. Jackson, Wyoming, man, 1965, the Snow King chairlift. <laughs> I bet it's The real. mom just has her arm over that person. I bet it's real. <laughs> it is insane, <laughs> that's, right? That's some 70s stuff right there. That is some 1965. That's from the 60s. Wow. I mean, you just gotta stay seated. <laughs> Grandpa, is this next one real? What do you do if this happens? It's a helicopter pilot and he passes out. He's it's gotta be a prank. <laughs> it is a prank, but dude, that is so look at her. She is so crying. I just I'd not punch cool. him. I would have already hit so I'd have, not cool. I'd have slapped him by now. The narcoleptic helicopter pilot. Oh, my God. No, oh, dude, I would be so, <laughs> so pissed, man. Uh, this is essentially dude when he's next to me on an airplane. He's like, you know, <laughs> the last lady that sat in this seat, ah, her that head got sucked cool. out the window. That is not cool. Watch, Scott's you auto gotta watch my auto Scott's play, auto play. Gotta watch my auto This is a good play. one, though. I don't know. What's... Oh, this is like gasoline all over there. It's great. <sighs> No, mine are usually happier than that. Everybody's fine. All Everyone, right. Everyone's fine. Everyone's fine. Here's my last public service announcement. All right. Look at this. All right. Is this, like, could you think of a truer statement? Grambo say it. Uh, idolizing a politician is like believing a stripper really likes you. <laughs> no. That is the truth. That is so true, man, on yes. every level. Yes. <laughs> I like uh, it. Hang on, I got one more, man. Grambo, I got a new segment. Okay. It says, Grambo, you have no excuse. All right. We have we have no excuse, man. All right? Wow. If this guy can do it. This Look how a, handsome this half a man is. He is a competitive runner. He's half that, a, he, he is all man. He is twice the man I am oh, at man. half my stature. Jesus. Oh, dude. As a man, I got to wonder. Oh, so with the I don't believe it's now. real. It's I. I mean I. Jesus, is this not real too? It's got fifty five million views. It's got to be. Don't bum my cloud out, it's man. It's got to be real. It's real. I mean, really it's trippy enough, looking, man. It's really there's trippy. Not enough looking. body parts there to like function or right? like to, to work. Damn, he's functioning, man. He's hauling ass. Yeah, I think he's got everything he needs. Belly button up, you know, you got your intestines. He probably lost half his intestines. I don't know what's happening, man, but it's right. just amazing that this guy says, I'm going to do it. Same with the ping pong guy. I'm going to do it, man. You got one life to live, right? I just, just thank God I camped at the lake this past weekend with no internet connection. That's about where I'm at now. I don't know, man. We're going to have to have a meeting. I'm <laughs> Do not tell me he's a mixed martial artist. Yeah. <laughs> Don't freaking say that. He's a fighter. He's a wrestler with no legs, huh? Yeah. Uh, this is real, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm consulting dozens of different sources. He You're does talk about he does jujitsu. <laughs> Could you imagine getting triangled by that or like rear naked? No, you're not getting triangled by that. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. No, I couldn't imagine that. <laughs> oh, wow. So anyway, yeah. man, don't let uh, you got one life to live. Whatever limitations you got, man, they're only in your head. Damn right. To a degree. To a degree. <laughs> I'm just trying to be all motivational, man. All right. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Share this show, comment, you know, we check these comments, subscribe to the channel. If you dug this show, there's more coming at you. Click on the videos YouTube's recommending. Have some more fun hanging out, talk and grow, BSing, and stay higher out there. Yeah. Take her easy, dude. Grambo, don't let me smoke the kaiju kush anymore, man. Oh, we're smoking. It's too much. It's too much. We're smoking. All right.